Linux CNC. It's an awesome software to control all kinds of machinery. In this video, I show you how I installed Linux CNC 2.10 on my machine and also a couple of tricks I learned working with Linux CNC in the last couple of months. At the end, I also show you how I was able to contribute to the project myself. So stay tuned. The PC I choose is the GK41. It is available from different brands such as Minis Forum, which is what I have. But I have also seen it from the company Kufan. The PC is nice since it is very small and can be easily supplied with 12V. On the back it has an HDMI and display port as well as two Ethernet ports. So we can use one to connect to the Mesa card directly and the other one to connect to the local Ethernet. In the front it also has four USB ports. To mount it they have also included this bracket here. With that I will mount it in the control cabinet. By the time I'm making this video, Linux CNC 2.10 is still under development and can be unstable from time to time. I already encountered a couple of bugs while installing it, which is why I made this video to show you how I got it to run. I've also documented each and every command I used on my project page. Check out the link to it in the description. So to begin we have to download the Debian image. I recommend to download the image which contains the live environment with the window manager Cinnamon and non-free drivers included. After lots of testing this worked best for me. I then used Rufus to create a mountable USB drive. Now to boot from it we have to fire up the PC and open up command line. Then we have to type in this command. It will reboot the PC into secure mode. From there we can select to boot from the USB drive. The installation itself is easy and there is not much we can do wrong here. At one point you are asked to give a root password. Leave this empty and set a user and a user password on the next page instead. I choose to delete Windows completely and let Debian use the whole disk but they can be installed next to each other also. You will then be able to select which one to use while booting. We are now greeted with the freshly installed Debian 11. The first step now is to install the real-time kernel to it. Luckily we can just install it with the terminal. In Grub Customizer we can already see the entry with the letters RT included. We switch the tab to the general settings. Here we select the real-time kernel as predefined default entry. I also set the delay to boot the default entry to 0 seconds to make the machine boot faster. I would leave this to 5 seconds if you choose to install Debian next to Windows. We also have to set kernel parameters. There are a couple of settings available. These should be adapted for the PC you are using. Check out the link to the Linux CNC wiki in the description. Last step is to hit save and do a reboot. While booting we can already see the real-time kernel being booted. We can make sure everything is working by checking in the terminal. And as you can see, it prompts preempt RT, which is the real-time kernel we just installed. The first step to install Linux CNC 2.10 is to install the dependencies. After that we clone the latest version from GitHub. Before we can start the compilation process, we have to run the configure uspace command in the Debian folder. If you encounter an error, check the error description. In this case I didn't install all the dependencies. I copied the missing package's name and installed it. Afterwards I tried again and it seemed to work. Until I was prompted with this error. This bug is there for a while now and has something to do with the documentation. To get around it we can adapt the rules file and delete the entries of all other languages other than English. After that the package builder runs through and now we can see a couple of deb files have been created. Nice! To install them I switched to the window manager and opened the folder with the files in it. We only need two of these, the documentation and Linux CNC. By right clicking on it and selecting open with gdebi package installer we can easily install both of them. That's it. Linux CNC is already installed and can now be started from the menu. I'm opening one of the machine simulation files. Nothing special about this, but as you can see, it runs. 
But to show you the performance of the machine, I am also running the Hull latency test. Here I am running two instances of GLX gears while also running the screen capturing in the background. To see if it makes a difference I also turn on Wi-Fi. Also opening Firefox isn't really affecting it. I think this is a good result. The installation is over. But now I have some good advice for you. I want my machine to boot up and automatically launch Linux CNC. One thing that is interfering though is the login screen. But we can easily enable it to auto login by modifying the LightDM configuration file. You have to scroll down to the part called Seed. There are two parameters called Auto Login User and Auto Login User Timeout. We have to uncomment these and set our username and set the timeout to zero. After saving the file, I then set an entry to automatically start Linux CNC at startup. To do this, I opened the startup application. In there, I disabled software I thought I didn't need and then made a new entry. I named it Linux CNC and copied the command to start it from the machine's shortcut on the desktop. The button with the gear symbol is there to test the entry. If it works, the PC will now start Linux CNC on startup. To configure Linux CNC, we will have to work a lot on the INI and HAL files. To do this, I recommend to use Visual Studio Code. It can be downloaded for free from the internet. After starting it, go to the Extensions tab. There, search for Linux CNC. After installing it, Studio Code now has integrated syntax highlighting for Linux CNC files, which I think is very helpful. Very helpful is also the next advice. I strongly recommend to manage your configuration files with a local JIT repository. The program I recommend is Git Cola and can be easily installed with the software store application. After starting it, create a new repository and select the configuration folder of your machine. You can see here on the left are all the files in it. To initialize the repo, we have to stage all files and commit them to it. In the commit summary, you should describe what you worked on or what you have changed. Do this every time after you worked on your config. Let me show you the cool part about this. I loaded my machine files and now with the cherry pick function, you can very easily see when you did change what. So in case you broke your config by accident, you can always look back and see what happened. I also uploaded my configuration to GitHub. So if you want to see how I set up my machine, you can have a look over there. But keep in mind, my machine is far from working and I am constantly changing it. I wanted to change the Linux CNC icon to fit my lathe application. But soon I realized the logo was a low resolution 48 by 48 pixel icon. This bothered me so much that I jumped on the Linux CNC forum and read about it. I found the original files of chip there and then was able to change the milling bit to a lathe tool. While being at it, I also created versions with different tools for milling, turning, laser cutting, water jetting and probing. All vector based and fully scalable. I was also requested in the forum to also create logos for the manuals for each of the supported languages. So I did. The best part is that I started a pull request to merge the icons to the official Linux CNC repo and it was actually accepted. Linux CNC 2.10 already uses the vector based icon that I created. The other versions are already there but not used yet. But the logos will be a tiny part of Linux CNC in the future and I think that is amazing. You can find them by looking through the SVG files in the Linux CNC folder. You can also find them on GitHub if you want to use them with your machine. Just download the file and set it as an applications icon. It is fully compatible with all versions of Linux CNC. I also set up Patreon, so if you want to support my work, you can become one of my very first Patreons and I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for following me on this adventure. I appreciate your support and kind words. I'm looking forward to work on new projects with you in the near future. Till then, have a nice day. Tschüss.